Hello, Tyler here with SSA Architecture, Small Studio Associates, licensed architects in Las Vegas, Nevada, and the surrounding area, including California and Arizona. Since its implementation in the 90s, the Americans with Disabilities Act has been a factor in every architectural project. Whether it be an existing building or one on the way, if it is a commercial or government project, it needs to comply with ADA standards. The plan set must show that they comply with ADA, and while the construction is underway, it is important to maintain ADA compliance. Since ADA is such a big deal, it will be beneficial to hire an architect with ADA knowledge and experience. If that is not an available option, an ADA consultant may be necessary to ensure that the project can open immediately upon completion of construction, rather than being closed while ADA issues are taken care of. In regards to the plan layout, there are some specific areas where an ADA consultant will be more helpful than in others. ADA is important in the bathrooms, as the ADA standards control much of how a bathroom is shaped and sized. For bathrooms, it is highly important that the room be large enough to allow for a wheelchair to be able to turn around. Everything within the bathroom must be accessible for people with disabilities. May they be people who use wheelchairs or not. This results in the counter and sink being at a certain height. Beyond the bathroom, it is also important that rooms throughout the building allow for wheelchair access. This becomes an issue in tight hallways and small offices. ADA requires that the entire building be accessible, and that means that any multi-level buildings almost always require elevators between levels. This is so that those who have trouble using stairs may use the entirety of the building. If the floor plan calls for a small set of stairs for a split level, a ramp will need to be included. Aside from these conditions, there are also many ADA rules pertaining to doors. There are space requirements for every door, including available space for approaching the door from both sides at every angle. There are also distance requirements from the door to the nearby walls. Beyond plan layout, the facility must also cover program accessibility, which is making sure that a person with disabilities can use the offerings provided by the facility. ADA also encompasses accessibility for the visually and hearing impaired. For people who are visually impaired, the most common accessibility solution is Braille signs. Braille signs are required at many places throughout a facility, but are most commonly found at the back. When it comes to people who are hearing impaired, signs are also important. It is important to have a directory sign throughout the facility and also pertinent to have rooms labeled by signs of a specific size. These signs will help those who have trouble hearing to use and get around the facility. The outside of a building is also important when it comes to ADA standards. If the building has a raised entrance, it is important to have a ramp leading to said entrance. It is also important to have ADA compliant handrails and sidewalks leading to an entrance ramps. Another common exterior requirement from the ADA is that of accessible parking. The ADA requires that buildings that require parking also provide spaces that are both close to facility and allow plenty of space for entering and exiting the vehicle. These parking spaces are to be provided to assist those who need to use them. Beyond the broader topics I covered here, there are many other minor intricacies that may go into making a building ADA compliant. As such, it is important to hire an architect who knows the ADA standards or hire an ADA consultant separately. This video only covered one of a list of professionals that may be necessary for any given project. Please continue on to another video to see which other professionals may be needed. If you are looking for more information, feel free to call us at 702-873-1718 and schedule a free consultation. Otherwise, you can check out our website's Frequently Asked Questions page over at smallstudioassociates.com. As always, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.